Joined now by the winner of the 45th annual AAA 400, driver of the number 24 drive to end hunger Chevrolet, Jeff Gordon. This is his 92nd victory in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, his fourth victory and 19th top 10 finish in 2014, and his fifth victory and 25th top 10 finish in 44 races here at Dover International Speedway. Jeff, congratulations. Very exciting race there. Tell us uh, how it was from your point of view. Yeah, no, it was uh, a really solid race all day long. I know we had that one little hiccup on, on pit road, but uh, and we, we over-adjusted one time, got a little bit loose. But other than that, the car was just solid uh, from the drop of the green. We uh, you know, Our strength was definitely the longer runs after about uh, – it, it took probably a good 10, 15 laps before our car came in. I don't know if that was tire pressure or, or, or what it was, but uh, sometimes it's just the pace. But my car really uh, came to life then. And we could start reeling in, guys, especially when we got into traffic. My car was real maneuverable. So I was pretty happy from the start of what we had. And we just kept trying to, to tune on it. And, and one time we over-adjusted and got a little bit loose. And from that point on, we were able to tighten it back up and, and you know, at the, all the way to the end. I knew we had a car that uh, if we got long runs, we were, we were going to be one of the cars to beat. And I saw Kevin have his issue. And he was going to be tough. He was, he was really strong. And I felt like we had a shot at the two car. Uh, you know, we had kind of stayed with him throughout the day. He really would fade after about 30 laps. And so, um, you know, I was able to, to run him down on one of those restarts and, uh, and on the longer run and get by him. And, and then at the end, you know, I was glad we had a lot of laps to go and that we didn't have a restart. He, he would have been tough on the restarts. But, um, you know, on that long run, we, we definitely were, were the car to beat. Questions for our race winner? Okay. Uh, Zach Atanz, Buddy Rubbins Racing. Uh, this win puts you up to 92 for your career. Uh, do you think, in your opinion, that you can reach 100? <laughs> I'm, ge I'm gonna tell you the same thing I say every time I'm sitting here winning uh, after a win. Um, it's awesome to have 92, and I look forward to challenging for 93. You know, I, I can't even think about 100 until we get to 99. Uh, but, I mean, it's I, I, I've never never dreamed in a million years that I would be here talking to you after 92 wins. You know, it's – and especially, you know, this – at this point in my career, this many years in the sport, um, to to be having the year that we're having, it's just something I never, never thought uh, could happen and – you know, it, it feels amazing, and right now, uh, you know, if I, if I felt like we could stay this competitive for the next, you know, several years, I would say, yeah, we can get there. But, you know, right, right now, it's just we're just laser focused on this championship and going to the next race. Um, I, I, I don't think we're going to get to 100 this year, <laughs> but uh, I hope I hope we get past 93. That would be be pretty awesome to get a couple more but and and it almost takes a win to you know to, to get to homestead that's our goal is getting to homestead whatever it takes we'll go to randy and then bob yeah hey jeff randy Kovitz, kansas city star you mentioned the next race it seems like this chase is now in you know three race mini seasons <clears throat> can you can you look at this next three race cluster kansas where you won one in the spring and charlotte and, and talladega can you kind of frame the, the the new season yeah, I mean, it, it, this is very interesting how how this format is is playing out, and these next three races are going to be tougher than the last three, and it's going to be tougher after those three. And you know, we we got Talladega in this next one, so that that's definitely going to shake things up, and and that's what's making Kansas and Charlotte so crucial and important, and why you're going to see. Um, drivers and teams taking big risks at, at those two tracks to try to, um, you know, make sure that you go into to Talladega without having to, to come out of there with a car in one piece because, you know, the chance to me, the chances of crashing at Talladega these days are about 80%. I mean, it's just the chances are so high the way the racing is, the way the drafting is, that even if you survive the wrecks all the way till the end, there's still probably going to be a wreck at the end. So you don't want to go in there worried about, um, you know, oh, we got to finish ninth or we got to finish fifth or, you know, th that would just add a lot of stress. So, you know, I think that um, 
Kansas is a great track for us, always has been, but this year we won there. That that uh, right now I'm I'm really excited about getting there and and see what we can do. Um, you know, regardless whether we win the next two races, we're going to need to have really solid finishes again to to have some comfort going into Talladega. But um, you know, you do have to somewhat look at just the next three races and not look too far ahead because you got to make it through to the next round. I think we're a team very capable of doing that. Um, and I'm excited about our chances, not just these next three, but all the way to Homestead. But um, we can't get that far ahead. You know, sure, the team prepares for those races to bring cars that can win there. But right now, you know, for me, I'm just thinking about Kansas and nothing else. Bob? Uh, Bob Hocker, Sporting News. Was it weird not to wonder about where you were in points after this race? And also, are you excited that you're now tied for the lead after the first three races, or are you somewhat disappointed you have, you're not able to kind of put distance between yourself and other people? Well, you know, I mean, we, we had a bad finish last week. So, you know, I don't know where this puts us in the points had we kept going forward. And I, we have a very strong team and a very consistent team, and I like our chances this year no matter what the format is, to be honest. But right now, because of what happened in New Hampshire, I'm kind of glad they're resetting it. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I think that we're a team that, um, again, is, is strong enough to win but also good enough to be consistent. And I think that's what's going to, to get you through to the next round. Uh, and and ultimately, I think what it's going to take to win this championship. And so I'm I'm liking the format. I'm liking right now when you have a car and a team like we have, you like whatever format there is uh, because you think you have a shot at it. Okay, we'll go to Jim, then Dustin, and back to Bob. Uh, Jim out of Charlotte Observer, I asked this same question to Rick. Um, as you mentioned it's uh, earlier, uh, Kevin had problems, but at the end of the race, uh, it basically became – you against uh, Brad, and I just wondered if uh, coming out on top in that battle, given the, how the three of you have run all this season, is a uh, kind of foretells good things for the rest of the chase. I mean, it's one race. Uh, I think Kevin definitely was the, the car to beat today, and I don't know if it, even on long runs we could reel him in a little bit, but I don't know if we could have passed him. I, I felt pretty confident against Brad um, if it wasn't a short run, but. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. We're here in Victor Lane. We we battled with one of the top uh, teams in the sport, the two car, and 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 we came out on top. I think I think that that gives us confidence in what we're doing. This is a unique track. You know, this is not Kansas. This is not Charlotte. Uh, and, and and I don't know if there's really any other track that you can compare this one to moving forward of what it's going to take to win the championship. So. Um, we're happy with what we did today, but I don't think it necessarily m means that we've got an edge on those guys. We we got to work, you know, really really hard, and and I think there's just like today, there's certain aspects of what we do that that we have an edge on them. Sometimes it's the longer runs. Uh, the Penske cars I think have the best short run cars in the sport right now, and when it comes down to restarts at the end, uh, those guys are you know, almost impossible to beat. So, you know, uh, if we have more races come down to long runs, I think we've got a great shot at them. Um, you know, Kevin, you know, we, they, those guys are extremely fast, but, but putting the whole race together, um, you know, you, you can see that they, they have some things to work on there. But, it, you know, if they, they figure that out, I don't know uh, anybody that can beat them. You know, they, they're just that, that fast. Uh, every weekend they have been. So, you know, what we have to do is just put pressure on those guys and, and continue to try to make our cars better each and every week. And and that, that I mean, you know, that's what I, I love about what Alan's doing. I mean, he yeah, he's excited about what we just did today, but I guarantee he's already thinking about development of a car, setups for Kansas, for Charlotte, you know, for down the road, uh, getting ready for tests that we have coming up and all these different things. And uh, that's that's what's going to... Um, you know, really ultimately make us competitive enough to race with those guys. Dustin. Dustin Long, MRN.com. I know you just talked about the confidence, but realistically, what else comes out of a, of a day like this? Because like you say, the track's not going to mirror, mirror to anything else. 
this format's different. So, uh, yeah, it's great that you got to celebrate in victory lane, but other than that, what do you get out of a day like this, and how does it help, uh, if uh, at all? Well, we get a lot out of it. I mean, a win's a win. Wins are not easy to, to get in this sport. You fight really hard to get them. Everybody does, and we uh, – you know, I think it, it, it makes a statement in, in one sense of what type of a team we are, um, you know, how, how f hard we fight, how you never count us out. I, um, you know, I think that, that you know, I think that, that it makes a statement that we're a team to beat for this championship. And it, it legitimizes it even, even to the next level, in, in my opinion. Um, I think for us, ourselves it gives us just confidence and more even more momentum you know to say okay we're in the heat of the battle this is this is the crucial moments of this season of when it matters most what are we capable of when that pressure is on like that 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 to me says a lot about who we are the kind of team we are and what our chances are moving forward mm -hmm. we'll go back here then up to the press box yeah jeff al pierce from auto week you mentioned just a second ago that Allen's already looking your words down the road. If this were not a three-race season, as it were, how far down the road would a team generally be looking? And in this case, are you looking beyond the next three-race segment? Well, and, and this is where things get really interesting from a team standpoint. I mean, if you go win Kansas – you 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 start you start looking for the next three races you know you you can you can even i don't know if you could look as far to homestead i mean those guys do because they're building cars and preparing for our tests and things but i mean really just 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 almost throw away those next races from a prep standpoint even though i think we can still go and, and, and win those races but it's it's really putting even that much more because you have to balance out your time you know the engineers only have so much time in the day to to work through simulation and gather information from the wind tunnel and and, and testing all these things that they do they only have so much time in the day and you got to spread that out and prioritize it and and if you win kansas your priority becomes Martinsville and, you know, the races in, in Phoenix. Uh, what's the other one in that segment? I'm trying to think. Texas. Texas. You know, you, you immediately just start going to work on all those things where, you know, for us right now, it's, it's not just Kansas. It's, you know, for me, it's just Kansas. I mean, I, as a driver, I don't think that f any further ahead than that. But for, you know, the crew chief and for the engineers, you know, they're thinking Kansas right now, and but they're they're also prepping for Charlotte and for Tal Talladega as well. Okay, I think we had a question in the press box. Dustin Holt, Times Record. Uh, congratulations, Jeff, on your victory. Um, Thank you. Uh, Kyle Larson was in the media center earlier today and said that uh, he wants to go out and win the first two uh, races of this next round and really make all the chasers uh, nervous going into Talladega. What do you think if uh, no chase driver wins uh, the, those two races and nobody's locked in going to <laughs> Talladega? Well, if he wins the first two, I hope I finish second to him both of those races because that's the only thing that would give me any comfort <laughs> at Talladega. Um, yeah, I mean, he's capable of it. He's running good. You know, he's, he's, they've been really running good every weekend. But, yeah, if a chaser doesn't win – it's going to make the Talladega extremely uh, interesting. Now you guys are going to be writing all your stories, hoping that nobody in the chase wins the next two races. I, I hope that doesn't happen. So it's our job to make sure we go out there and, and, and win those races. And uh, the guys that aren't in the chase, it's their job to, to you know, make their own statement and, and try to make Talladega that much more interesting and exciting, which would be good for the sport. You know, there's certain things that happen that, uh, you know, more good for the teams and drivers and things that are good for the fans and you know the media and people watching uh so yeah i i, <laughs> I don't want to know even think about what that would be like going to talladega under those circumstances we have one more question from the press box lee spencer motorsport.com you seem to have a really good time with your race team how important is that with as much pressure as all the teams are feeling right now for everybody to be on the same page yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it's always a work in progress um, and, and balance. Um, you know, you don't want to have so much fun to where 
you're not putting in the right amount of effort to prepare uh, for the races or, or you, that you're not working hard enough. So when, when your guys work really hard and, and things are going well, um, I think it's important to get together as a group and have some fun, whether it be go to a go-kart track or go to Sambo's, <laughs> you know, whatever it may be. I mean, we, uh, we, we, we have a team that's enjoying what we're doing a lot right now, but they're also working really, really hard, and I think we've got really good balance. And I think that's, that's led from the top, you know, and, and I think that you could go all the way top uh, to Rick Hendrick, but I'll think Alan Gustafson, the way he – uh, lives his life and the way you know he runs the team from the crew chief standpoint. You know he he has great balance on on how hard he works. Nobody works harder than him, but he likes to laugh and have fun and and enjoy um, you know the spoils as well. And and I think that that translates to the team, everybody to to be able to to go and enjoy those those moments and times. And it's important to do that. You can't you can't just work 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 work. You know you do that you you're going to burn yourself out on a 38-week uh, schedule. Uh, so, you know, we, I think we have good balance.